In our previous video, we learned how to solve a type of system of differential equations using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In this video, we'll look at more examples and talk about the different types of solutions. First, let me restate what we learned from our previous video. For the system of differential equations, x prime equals a times x. If a is diagonalizable and a equals pdp inverse, where d is the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues and p is the matrix containing the eigenvectors, then the general solution to the DE is x equals some constant c1 v1 e to the lambda 1 t plus some constant c2 times v2 e to the lambda 2 t and so forth summed up through some constant cn vn e to the lambda n t. In differential equations, we use the term general solution if our formula describes all possible solutions to the differential equation. So let's look at some more examples. Let's consider the following system of differential equations. x1 prime equals 4x1 plus x2 and x2 prime equals 2x2. First, I want to write this in the form x prime equals some matrix A in this case it's 4, 1, 0, 2 times x. So our first step in finding the general solution is to find the eigenvalues and then their corresponding eigenspaces. In this example, again, we have a triangular matrix, so we can easily read off the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are lambda equals 4 and 2. So let's find the eigenspace for lambda equals 4. We want to look at the null space of the matrix A minus lambda I, which in this case is 0, 1, 0, negative 2. This row reduces to 0, 1, 0, 0. So your eigenspace is the span of the vector 1, 0. For lambda equals 2, we want to look at the null space of 2, 1, 0, 0. This reduces to 1, 1 half, 0, 0. So our eigenspace is the span of the vector negative 1 half, 1. Once we know the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, we're ready to write our general solution. So in this case, the general solution is x equals some constant c1 times the vector 1, 0, e to the lambda 1, t. So that's e to the 4, t, plus c2 times the vector negative 1, half, 1, e to the lambda 2, t. So that's e to the 2, t. Okay. So that's our general solution. Suppose now that we are given some initial conditions. Say at t equals 0, we know something about x1 and x2. So for example, I may have the following initial conditions. So here we have x1 at time t equals 0 equals 3, and x2 at time t equals 0 equals negative 2. Sometimes this initial condition might be expressed like x0 equals 3, negative 2. With an initial condition, we can find a particular solution to the differential equation. Basically, a particular solution is just a solution to the differential equation that also satisfies the initial condition. So what we'll do is plug the initial condition into the general solution and solve for the constants c1 and c2. So for us, at time t equals 0, we have c1, 1, 0 times e to the 0 plus c2, negative 1 half 1, e to the 0 equals the vector 3, negative 2. So on the left, we have c1 times 1, 0 plus c2 times negative 1, half 1 equals 3, negative 2. This equation can be written in the form 1, negative 1, half, 0, 1 times c1, c2 equals 3, negative 2. To solve for c1 and c2, will row reduce the augmented matrix 1, negative 1, half, 0, 1, augmented with 3, negative 2. So if we do 
row 1 plus 1 half row 2, we get 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, negative 2. So C1 is 2 and C2 is negative 2. This means that our particular solution is x equals 2 times the vector 1, 0 times e to the 4t minus 2 times the vector negative 1 half 1 e to the 2t. So what we want to do next is to look at our solution and try to say something about its behavior. To understand the behavior of the solutions in a system of differential equations, we can plot trajectories. To plot a trajectory, we start with the point x0, then we sketch our particular solution as t progresses. In our example, we start at the point 3, negative 2. As t increases, the particular solution goes this way. So this is an example of a trajectory. We can start at other points. For example, let's say I start at 1, 0. If my initial condition is 1, 0, then C1 is 1 and C2 is 0. So my particular solution is 1, 0, e to the 4t. So my trajectory looks like this. If I start at the point negative 1 half 1, then in my particular solution, C1 would be 0 and C2 would be 1. So my particular solution is negative 1 half 1 e to the 2t. And in that case, my trajectory will look like this. I will draw a few more trajectories to give you a sense of what the solutions look like. As you can see, in each of these trajectories, our solutions move further and further away from the origin. And that's because in our general solution, we have e to the 4t and e to the 2t. And as t increases, those quantities get larger and larger, which moves us further away from the origin. Since our solutions move away from the origin, we say that the origin is a repeller or a source. And this happens when all of your eigenvalues are greater than zero. On the other hand, if all eigenvalues are less than zero, then all solutions eventually approach the origin. So we say that the origin is an attractor or a sink. Lastly, if some eigenvalues are positive and some are negative, then we say that the origin is a saddle point because on some trajectories you approach the origin, but on others you repel away from it. So knowing the eigenvalues of a system of differential equations allow you to determine the long-term behavior of the solutions. Let's look at one last example. Let's consider the system of differential equations x1 prime equals 4x1 minus 5x2, x2 prime equals negative 2x1 plus x2. We can write the system in the form x prime equals the matrix 4, negative 5, negative 2, 1 times x. To find the general solution, we would need to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Since I don't have a triangular matrix, I would need to find the characteristic equation and solve for the eigenvalues. So let's look at the determinant of a minus lambda i, which in this case is 4 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus negative 5 times negative 2. This simplifies as 4 minus 5 lambda plus lambda squared minus 10, which is lambda squared minus 5 lambda minus 6. And this factor is as lambda minus 6 lambda plus 1. Set this equal to 0. We see that our eigenvalues are lambda equals positive 6 and negative 1. Now let's find the eigenspaces. For lambda equals 6, we want to look at the null space of negative 2, negative 5, negative 2, negative 5. And this row reduces to 1, positive 5 halves, 0, 0. So your eigenspace is the span of negative 5 halves, 1. For lambda equals negative 1, we want to find the null space of 5, negative 5, negative 2, 2, which row reduces to 1, negative 1, 0, 0. That means your eigenspace is the span of 1, 1. 
So your general solution is x equals c1 times negative 5 halves 1 e to the 6t plus c2 1 1 e to the negative t. Since one of your eigenvalues is positive and the other is negative, we can conclude that the origin is a saddle point. Now let's say that we have the initial condition x naught equals negative 4, 3. Let's find the particular solution. Again, what you'll want to do is plug in negative 4, 3 into your general solution, setting t equal to 0. So when we set t equal to 0 in your general solution, you're left with c1 negative 5 halves 1 times e to the 0, which is just 1, plus c2 times 1, 1. Again, e to the 0 is just 1, equals our initial condition negative 4, 3. So this can be turned into the equation negative 5 halves 1, 1, 1 times c1, c2 equals negative 4, 3. To solve for c1 and c2, form the augmented matrix and row reduce. So through some row operations, your row reduces to 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 1. So this tells you that your c1 is 2, c2 is 1. So your particular solution is x equals 2 times negative 5 halves 1 e to the 6t plus 1, 1 e to the negative t. So we now know how to use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to find solutions to systems of differential equations. And we know how to describe the behavior of the solutions. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.